All right then, so finally now is the time we can start to move on from creating all of these different components and start to work with Redux and eventually Firebase as well. So first things first, let us install Redux, but not only Redux, we want to install another package and that package is called React Redux. And React Redux is the glue layer, the binding layer between React and Redux, okay? So we're gonna install both of those packages. First of all, CD into Mario plan, and then we'll say NPM install Redux and React Redux. So install both of those. And now we've got those installed, we can go ahead and start to create our store. So inside index.js, this is where we'll create the store. But first of all, we need to import create store from the Redux library. So let's import then it's create store from Redux. So this create store, this is a function. So we'll create the store and store it in a constant called store and set it equal to create store and invoke that function. So this will create a store and store it in store, all right? All right then, so you probably should already know the basics of Redux, and if you don't remember, check out my other complete React and Redux tutorial series first, and you should know that we have to pass in a root reducer into this function right here, and that associates the reducer with the store. Now, in the React and Redux playlist that I created previous to this, we only ever used one reducer, which is passed directly into the store, and that is fine. But when you start to add a lot of different action types, that reducer can quickly become pretty messy and unmanageable. So we can create multiple reducers for different parts of our app to each handle their own small set of actions. Then what we can do is combine those reducers into one single root reducer and then pass that one root reducer into this store, okay? So that's what we'll do. We'll have a reducer for handling our project actions, like creating or deleting projects, and we'll have a reducer for our authentication actions, like signing up or logging in, and then we'll combine those reducers into a single root reducer and pass that in right here, all right? So since we're having multiple different reducers, what I'm gonna do is create a new folder over here in the source folder called store, first of all, so anything to do with the store, we'll go in here, and then a new folder called reducers. Okay, so the first reducer I want to create is the auth reducer, so new file, and we'll call this auth reducer.js. Okay, so inside here, we need to create that reducer, which is just a function. We'll store it in a constant and call it auth reducer. Okay, so this function right here is an arrow function, and inside here, it takes in two parameters, the state and the action. You should know all this already. So the first time this reducer runs, when our application first starts up, the state is not gonna be active yet. We don't really have a state yet. So what we need to do is pass in an initial state as the default value, which is what we'll do here. So we'll set that to init state. So when we don't have a state, then it will take this value right here as the initial state. Now then, we need to create that initial state up here. So we'll say const init state is equal to just an empty object at the minute. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is export this at the bottom. So we'll say export default and then auth reducer. Now inside the function right here, all we're gonna do is just return the state for now, so we're not gonna do anything to the state. Remember, this is where we actually manipulate the state ultimately, but at the minute, since we don't need to manipulate any data, we're just gonna return the state. We're just setting up our reducers at the minute. Okay, so that's the auth reducer sorted for now. Let's copy that because we're gonna create a new reducer and this will be called project reducer.js. I'll paste that in here and change this and this to project, like so. We still have this init state right here, which we can pass in the first time around, and we still return the state like that. So this is all fine now. So we can save that. And now what we need to do is create a root reducer where we combine these two together because we need to pass that one single root reducer into the store over here. So let's create another file over here, and this will be called root 
reducer.js. Okay, so how do we combine these two reducers into one single root reducer? Well, first of all, we have to import both of those reducers. So let's do that. Import auth reducer from, and it's dot forward slash current directory auth reducer. Okay, next one, import project reducer from, and again, dot forward slash project reducer this time. Okay, so we have those imported now. The next thing we need to do is import something from the Redux library, and that something is called combine reducers. And this is a function which will combine our reducers into one. So let's import that. Import combine reducers from the Redux library. Okay, so what we do is we say const root reducer. This is what we ultimately want to pass into the store. And this is going to equal to combine reducers, which is the function we just imported right here. And inside this function is an object. And we say which reducers we want to combine together. And what do we want to call each individual reducer? So, for example, we're saying, OK, we want a property here called auth. And that is going to be the auth reducer. We also want a property called project. And that is going to be the project reducer. So now in our state of the store, we'll have these two properties, auth and project, and they will correspond to these different reducers. So the auth reducer will update information on the auth property and the project reducer will update information on the project property inside the state object. So we're combining those two now into a root reducer with these two properties. And now we have that root reducer. What we can do is export that. So export default root reducer and now it's exported we can import it into the index.js file over here so let's do that first of all import root reducer from and it's dot forward slash then we go into the store folder then we go into the reducers folder then it's the root reducer like so and now we can pass that root reducer in right here. OK, so we've created our store. We've created our reducers and the root reducer to combine those two together. And we've passed that root reducer into this function right here. So all we need to do now is import the provider component, which can surround our app and pass the store into the application so that the application has access to the store. So let's import provider from and it's going to be react hyphen redux this is the binding layer remember the stuff that helps us to bind redux with our react app so now we can say down here that we want this to be a provider tag surrounding the app and i'm just going to grab that and paste it at the end over here like so and we want to pass the store into this so we'll say store is equal to and it's going to be the store that we create right there. OK, so then now we've got our store set up and our reducers set up and we've passed that store right here into the provider surrounding the application. In the next video, what we can do is start to add a little bit of dummy data to see if this all works and communicate with the Redux store from our application.